Okay, well, I decided to make a little video to explain just how to get this started so you won't panic, okay? So we are going to solve these quadratic equations. And we do the zero or we're going to use the completing the square property or the quadratic formula. Now, you need to use each method at least once. So if you have a favorite, you might be able to use that many times. So for example, problem number one. We have to solve the quadratic equation that's given. Now, for many of you, this will not be enough space in this box. If it's not, please use another piece of paper because then you can show your work thoroughly. Now, some of you kind of write small and you enjoy that. So I just didn't want to waste too much paper. I probably should have not made the space there and just made you write the whole thing on a separate sheet. But anyways, so this first problem, which method am I going to use? Well, honestly, if I can factor, this is my go-to method. And I think that there is a number that multiplies to negative 6 and adds to positive 5. Okay, so I'm going to use the zero product property. Now the zero product property says set the equation equal to zero. Well, that's already done for me. Now the second word of the property is product. So I'm going to write it as a product. Well, I know that what multiplies to negative six and, six and adds to a five. That would be plus six minus one. So now I'm going to find the two solutions or we also call those the two roots, or the two x-intercepts. So I get x equals negative 6 as one of the solutions, and x equals 1 as the other solution. So I have just solved that problem. So I've demonstrated zero product property for you. OK, now in number two, I'm going to demonstrate the completing the square. Now the reason why I like completing the square for this problem is I notice the coefficient of the x term we call that b. If we divide that by 2 and add 1, negative 2 divided by 2, ah, uh, such a pretty number. So I'm going to use completing the square. Now remember, for completing the square, the first step is you have to write it in the form ax squared plus bx equals c. Well, that's already done. Cha-ching! Yeah! Now the second step is I need to actually complete the square. That's where I take half of the middle term, and the middle term here is negative 2. So I divide negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 1. And then I square that. Now I'm going to add this number to both sides. So I'm going to add a negative 1 squared to the left side. And I'm going to add a negative 1 squared to the right side. Okay. Next step is we're going to factor. Because remember, our whole goal was to complete the square. And now I have made a perfect square by adding a negative 1 squared to both sides. So I get x minus 1 squared equals 1 plus 1 is 2. And the last step is I'm going to solve. So to solve this problem, I must take the square root of both sides. So I get the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to radical 2. Undo the absolute value, so now I have x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus radical 2 get x by itself, so x will equal 1 plus or minus radical 2. And those are the solutions to that quadratic formula, uh, to that quadratic equation. Fantastic. Okay, let's do one more example where I'm going to model the quadratic formula. So now I will have modeled each problem for you. Now, I'm not going to do 3, because actually 3, I would use a different technique, and I'll let you figure that out. How about let's do number 5? Because when I look at 5, I notice that there's no number that multiplies to 2 and adds to 7. So zero product property is out of, the, out of the options. Also, if I wanted to do completing the square, I would isolate the constant. And then I would take half of 7, which is 7 halves, square it, which is 49 fourths, and add it to both sides. And, you know, I don't want to do that. 49 fourths? No way. So let's use the quadratic formula. So we know that a equals 1, b equals 7, and c equals 2. And so the solutions, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Right? That's what I thought. Okay, all over 2a. And then you have to simplify this problem. So we'd end up with negative 7 plus or minus the square root. Now it's 49 minus 8. So that's 41 all over 2. Now, we notice radical 41 cannot be simplified. 
So my solution is an irrational, irrational solution. So now I have just modeled an example of each type of problem for you. Now let's talk about the graph, and then I'll let you complete the rest on your own. So the first problem, x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals y. Now I have some tools that I can use to figure this out. So for y-intercept, I will always let x equal 0. So if I let x equal 0, I get 0 squared plus 5 times 0 minus 6 equals y. So therefore, y would be negative 6. Now we always write the y-intercept as a point, okay? Now the x-intercepts. Now x-intercepts, these are the solutions. Now I go back to the front page. Do I want to use the zero product property, or do I want to use um, completing the square or quadratic formula? Well, I can see this problem factors very easily. So I'm going to set y equal to 0, and it would be x plus 6 times x minus 1. So my two solutions are negative 6 and 1. Now remember, we always write x-intercepts as ordered pairs. So it would be negative 6, 0, and 1, 0. Okay, lovely. Axis of symmetry. I have two ways of calculating the axis of symmetry. One way is I can average the x-intercepts. Now, we know to take the average, we add up the two numbers, so negative 6 plus 1, and divide by 2. So I would end up with negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5 halves. Oh, lovely, Kleiber, you gave us a fraction, okay? So that means the axis of symmetry, now that's a line, it's negative 5 halves. Now, you know that there's another way also to calculate the axis of symmetry. And that's by using what we like to call the boot, opposite of b all over 2a. So the opposite of b, so the opposite of 5 all over 2 times 1. Notice it comes out to the exact same solution as doing it by averaging the x-intercepts. Oh, what the Sit down. I'm just making a videotape for the problem you came to ask me about. Luke Bruckner just walked in the room, folks. Okay. Now we're going to find the vertex, okay? So I'm going to get some space here. Now we all know the vertex is located on the axis of symmetry. So I'm going to take that negative 5 halves and I'm going to substitute it into the original equation. Now I know you're really happy that I'm doing the example that has fractions in it because you're like, go Kleiber. I'm so glad it's you, not me. Okay, minus 6 equals y. So I get 25 fourths, and then it's minus, 5 times 5 is 25, 25 halves, minus 6 equals y. Now I'm going to make a common denominator, so I have 25 fourths minus 50 fourths minus 24 fourths equals y. Well, 25 fourths minus 24 fourths, that gives me 1 fourth minus 50 fourths. So you just have to have precision and patience. I get negative 49 fourths. Woo -hoo! And we know 49 fourths, isn't that like um, 4 goes into 49, 1, 12? It's a little bit smaller than 12, huh? So that means the vertex is going to be negative 5 halves and negative 12 and 1 fourths. Now we know, wait, wait what's up with that, Ms. Kleiber? Okay, don't you hate it when I talk in third person? Negative 12 and 1 fourths. Now our graph is not going to be super precise because we're graphing fractions, but we're sure going to give it a good try, aren't we? So if I draw my graph here, now notice the x and y axis is not drawn for you. And so you know what I'm going to do is, because I notice I have a lot of negative numbers, I'm going to actually draw my x-axis kind of up here, okay, x, y, Okay, and I'm going to graph the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the x-intercepts are negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, and 1, 0. The axis of symmetry is at negative 5 halves, which is negative 2 and a half. So that means it's going to be between negative 2 and negative 3. So here is my axis of symmetry. Now we know that the vertex is located on that, and the 
x is a little bit smaller than negative 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's right about there. Okay, now to draw a parabola, we know we have to have the vertex and at least one point on either side. Well, to the right, it's lovely because I have two points. Now, it's going to be vertical, so therefore, I must want to, um, there must be a point symmetrical, the y-intercept, and to those points, look at this beautiful parabola. Doesn't it make you say, ooh, ah, ah. Now, I did that problem for you. Have fun, kids. See you tomorrow.